Hi, everybody. Mark Simmer here. I work for the Minnesota Small Business Assistance Office, part of the Department of Employment and Economic Development. Welcome. I uh, just want to let you know a couple of things. We are recording the, the meeting, so we can certainly send that link out or the link should be in the, the meeting uh, link itself. Um, what we're doing is our third uh, monthly meeting, basically getting resource partners together and providing an opportunity for business owners business advisors to uh, kind of all come together. We have kind of a, a, a conversation. And I am going to um, help monitor the uh, the business meeting. I have a couple of questions that people sent in um, also that we'll uh, discuss. And I am going to turn the meeting over to uh, Neela Malgar. She is the executive director of the business, sorry, the small business and innovation unit. There you go, Neela. Well, thank you. Welcome. Uh, thank you for taking this time to connect. We are planning these monthly meetings very purposefully, as Mark shared. We want to make sure that our businesses can connect to government and other partners across the state to get the answers they need when they need it. And so every meeting, every month, we will provide some small uh, information that might be relevant to, for businesses. But the majority of the time is for you, the participants, to ask questions and to, you know, ask your peers, ask others that are part of um, DEED or partner organizations. So I want to thank the Minnesota Chamber for being a partner in this, the Small Business um, Administration, and the Better Business Bureau. So um, we do everything in partnership at DEED. Um, like Mark said, uh, he will be moderating today, but I really encourage you for, I, I see a lot of individuals that help businesses on the call. We would really appreciate your help also pushing this out to the businesses that you serve. We know that starting a business, running a business is very lonely, and we want these calls to help um, show that community to business owners and make sure that they, they have the resources they need. So just encourage you to continue to share this monthly meeting with the businesses that you serve. And I will turn it over to Mark. Thank you. Thanks, Dela. Uh, so we uh, asked some of our uh, business resource partners to basically kind of share what they think are their current topics that come up when they're dealing with people, certain subjects, and uh, graciously, uh, Andy Donahue of the uh, Minnesota Small Business Development Centers uh, was going to kick us off with kind of giving us a rundown or kind of an overview of, of what the SBDCs are are hearing lately. So, Andy, go ahead. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon now. Boy, time is flying today. I already said good morning again. Um, welcome to our, you know, our monthly call. This is obviously uh, a great opportunity for not only small businesses, but the resource partners to, you know, showcase what's going on in the state of Minnesota. So this month, as Mark just mentioned about topics that normally come up, you know, in, in some of our general discussions, you know, throughout the nine SBDC regional centers that we have within the state and probably one of the, the biggest ones that we constantly hear or constantly are seeing is reasoning for our business business plan, strategic planning document, and why it is important um, for not only that entrepreneur, but also for the long-term viability of their business. So I just want to kind of kick that off and kind of give a couple of the reasons for that. Number one is, you know, business plans have changed over the years. You know, it used to be this little, you know, five to 10 page document where business owners would be able to use it for a strategic foundation where they're able to utilize market research, a little bit of financial data, and basically, why are they going into business itself? They would present this not only to business partners, potential investors, banks, lenders, CDFIs about why they would need business. It's really evolved over the last you know decade of why a business plan has turned into more of a strategic roadmap, a strategic document, because it's showcasing that long-term viability of why the business is going to be successful, but also for a business owner to really reflect back and use it as a working document year over year. You know, a, a lot of business owners will create the business plan itself, use it maybe once or twice, put it on the shelf, and probably never to see it again. Where you can use it now as a, a working document through a variety of different tools and resources that are available, but also can help you measure and see your success, you know, on a weekly basis, monthly basis, and use it as that roadmap in the future. 
So if you're having a, a, a great profitability month, if you're having some you know pitfalls and where things aren't working out well, you can reflect back on that. And we use that you know with the SBDC statewide where we, we cater and will certainly work with entrepreneurs and business owners and really look back and also look forward to how they're going to be successful with that um, with that business plan. So that's number one. The, the second thing is the financial aspect of it and creating pro forma is the importance of really understanding the financial purposes of your business, especially in today's society. And we're, we see it with the way that that rates have changed, inflation has really taken over in a variety of different sectors, and how it is important to understand the financial impact of not only your income statement, your cash flow analysis, but also you know reconciliation through your balance sheet and using those three core documents in a pro forma to understand the financial viability of your business. Banks, lenders, and other financial institutions are going to require that of you if you ever are looking at you know, receiving money or getting any lending through them. But also you want to understand it and see it on a monthly basis too. So you have a big picture of where your business is and where you forecast your business to go. So within the SBDCs, utilizing the business plan and the performa are two key tools that we are seeing constantly on a monthly basis. And you know, obviously just about every day when we work with entrepreneurs. But it, uh, those are two key documents that business owners want to make sure that they are working with their wealth and have a good understanding with. Um, the other question that we get, you know, quite often is, you know, do you work with businesses that are out of that that pre startup phase? And we certainly do. You know, we might have the the name small in there, really, you know, focus in on that that startup aspect of it. But the SBDC statewide will work with businesses from any stage of their growth that startup phase into that, that growth, you know, two to five year model, all the way through succession planning and making sure that they are, you know, relevant, have all the tools to be successful, but also be that that peer to peer mentoring um, throughout their entrepreneur journey. So those are those are three key areas that the SBCs are seeing, you know, quite often. Other things that we might see, you know, on a, a variety of basis is market research. We have a variety of different market tools, market research tools that we can partner up with, but also try to understand local laws and local licensing. And our, our partners with the Small Business Assistance Office, Launch Minnesota, Community Partnerships, they're great resources within our D team that we, no matter what part of that entrepreneur journey that we're at, we have the resources that we can provide to find those answers throughout the SBDC and so on. So those are a couple of the key areas, but I'll turn it back over to Mark, and then we can certainly get some other questions as well. Oh, thanks, Andy. I think that covers a lot of things that we see in our office. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to our office director, Mr. Charles Schaefer, the director of the Office of uh, Small Business Assistance. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I wanted to address two questions that we get recently. One that was been around for a long time and one that's quite recent. Uh, the recent one uh, relates to the just developed and just published in September rules that have been under developed by the under development by the federal government for the last two years to implement the Corporate Transparency Act. The Corporate Transparency Act, remember, is an anti-money laundering and anti-terrorism financing law that essentially requires all businesses to report to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network of the U.S. Department of the Treasury, the beneficial ownership of the business itself. Uh, that is, who, who is actually owning and uh, running the business. Uh, the act really identifies uh, the businesses that have to respond as everybody. There is no exemption, and I want to stress that, no exemption for small businesses. There are exemptions in the law, but they relate to the kinds of businesses that are involved. Essentially, businesses that would report this kind of information someplace else, banks, brokerage firms, businesses that are, have large financial uh, license restrictions, those kinds of businesses are exempt from the law. Uh, but everybody else, including small businesses, has to report, and they have to report by Janu starting January uh, 1st of 2024. 
Now, the law the, and the rules speak to what's a beneficial owner, and the defini definition is extremely broad. The definition is anybody who has not less than 25% ownership of the company or anybody who uh, regularly uh, exercises operational control and direction of the company. Now, uh, except with one exception, and that is people who operate, who exercise that control only by virtue of their employment. So owners, probably directors and officers would be covered by the law as having to respond, but uh, no one's quite sure about managers. That's still an issue that has to be resolved by the people at, at the treasury. Uh, the reports that they have to submit has to have the uh, beneficial owner's name, date of birth, address, and the number that they have on some government issued identification card like your driver's license or your passport. Uh, the uh, FinCEN people, the Financial Crimes Enforcement Net pe Network, are going to start collecting this stuff, uh, as I said, on January 1st. Uh, businesses will have businesses formed before January 1st, one of the most existing businesses, will have a year to respond until uh, January 1st of 2025. If your business starts after January 1st, 2024, you have 30 days from the time the business actually conducts its registration, gets the certificate from the Secretary of State to, uh, to respond to that. Uh, so the question, the question we get is, can Deed help us fill out, can, can Deed fill out this form for us? And by the way, the form is filled out and submitted electronically. That is not yet up on the uh, FinCEN site, but I expect it to be up soon. Uh, and the answer is no, we, we can't. The uh, rules are quite clear that the only person who can sign the attestation is the person who actually is the owner of the company. And that means the person who actually filed the uh, ownership documents with the Secretary of State or the person who directly supervises that person. So uh, our, uh, our involvement here is to uh, hopefully give you some information about this uh, and uh, guide you there. I direct everybody to look at the very excellent uh, FinCEN site at uh, uh, fincen.gov slash beneficial ownership that is up there now including a 56 page small business compliance document. Uh, there's a lot of uh, information there and they indicate that you can ask them questions if you if you want to. So uh, we uh, this is a uh, area that we will, are surprised at, I think, a little bit. So we are as much in the dark about this as many people are. Second question is sort of a related one, and that deals with licensing, permitting and compliance issues. As you know, part of the Small Business Assistance Office is the Bureau of Business Licenses, which most people know because we maintain this rather lengthy and substantial uh, electronic licensing site, uh, uh, e-licensing. Uh, and uh, we also counsel and assist people who are seeking licensing and permitting or seeking to comply with licensing and permitting requirements after they are licensed. And the question comes back phrased this way. Can DEED, or Small Business Assistance Office, be my advocate in my dealings with a state agency? And if they said, I've read your statute and I noticed that you have an advocacy role that's given to you for dealing with licensing and permitting and meeting the requirements of licenses and permits. And that's really, really rather new. It's about 10 years old. Uh, the problem is they didn't define advocacy well enough. Uh, certainly, we can give you advocacy in the sense of we can give you information about what's required, where to get it. We can give you introductions to the licensing staff and agencies, but we can't be your attorneys and we can't be your agents. And probably most significant, once you have a license, we can't be we can't intervene directly uh, in uh, any. Uh, enforcement or administrative actions that an agency may take against you. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, there's only one office in state government that has that kind of ability to intervene as a part of an advocacy role, and that's the uh, uh, 
uh, office that represents the public, and it's part of the Attorney General's office that represents the public in public utilities hearings. We've sought that sort of uh, advocacy role, expanded advocacy role several times over the last 30 years and had never been successful getting it. So our, our advocacy role is certainly to uh, do all we can to uh, make you well informed about what you need and how you get it. Uh, but we were sort of stymied in terms of direct action on your behalf. So, no. All right, thank you, Charles. Uh, I uh, manage the uh, Minnesota e-licensing content. So as Charles said, we can get you to the correct spot within an agency, within a unit that has that licensing or that permit or that registration required. So it, um, I dropped the information for Minnesota e-licensing in the chat. And then I also um, added the information for the uh, FinCEN site. Um, and they are updating that continually. Uh, we have some information uh, also linked if you happen to go out to our website under our recently asked questions. Uh, I put links in there. And what I wanted to do now was I see uh, Sean O'Neill from the Minnesota Chamber is joined us. And I wasn't able to connect with them before the meeting. I just wanted to see, Sean, if you had some some basic topics that, that you get at the, uh, the Minnesota Chamber. Yeah, thanks, Mark. And I my internet connection is kind of coming in and out. So if I drop out, I apologize in advance. But, um, you know, I think that there's, uh, you know, a few kind of common themes or categories that tend to come up when businesses reach out to us for assistance or, or we're trying to, to help companies out there. Uh, and here I'm talking especially about uh, kind of earlier stage businesses or, or small businesses. And, um, you know, I guess kind of three C's of, of capital customers and connections are common themes. So companies will reach out to us asking, you know, how do I find funding? Um, whether that's, uh, you know, certain kinds of, uh, you know, lending products that meet their needs or other kinds of financing in, in terms of, uh, you know, equity uh, investment capital or grants or tax credits, things that can help um uh, help them kind of uh, access capital for, for their business and our role as a chamber is really to point businesses in the direction of the existing resources that it, that are out there for them um and so it's helping them really understand you know who they can talk to to explore sba loans or to connect with a cdfi near them uh, which not only will provide lending support but oftentimes technical assistance alongside that um, uh, kind of, you know, helping them connect with a, a banker in, in their community to explore different financing options that they have. So that capital piece is really pointing them in, in the direction of the providers that exist in their community or their, their region um, and helping kind of uh, connect those dots. Uh, you know, businesses often will just, they're trying to grow their customer base. And so they're, they might come to the chamber saying, hey, is there a list of businesses? You know, I serve um, I, you know, I, I serve uh, manufacturing businesses between kind of this size. Is there a list out there that I could look at to try to identify potential customers? So we might help um, companies access some of the free tools that are out there to um, kind of assess their, their market, potential customers, um, or in many cases, it's, it's really directing them to an entity like the SBDC or SCORE. Those um, uh, advisory services that can help them really develop a smart marketing and sales strategy, do that background market research in a more sophisticated way. Um, and then with connections, you know, that can really look different. Uh, sometimes it's uh, connections to suppliers. We'll have a business, let's say that's a, a, a food or beverage, uh, they, they make a food or beverage product, and they're trying to find access into a co-packing facility, or they need to, to find someone that can help them through a regulatory process to get uh, um, uh, approval for their product. So really kind of that assortment of different kind of connections that can help support their business, um, uh, get off the ground or grow. And then, you know, there's a fourth category of just kind of all the random stuff that a business never thinks about, these issues that come up that um, all of a sudden they're faced with having to, to deal with this challenge and they say, yeah, I don't know, I, I don't know anything about this. Maybe I'll try calling the chamber and seeing if they know what, what we do, you know, what, what we should do about that. So um, that can really be a, a really wide range of things, but 
um, you know, those are those are things that are, we're happy to try to field those questions. And usually, again, it's trying to find uh, connect them with an expert that can uh, resolve that issue. Yeah, great. Uh, I, I know that I use the Minnesota Chamber site quite a bit. We include that in our guide to starting a business publication. We uh, update continually. We print annually. Um, thanks, Sean. Um, if some other people want to throw in some some questions, I'm just going to uh, go right to questions that I've received via email and in the calls that I've had with with people this uh, this last week and certainly within this last month from the last meeting. Uh, one question is, does the Economic Development Office see small micro businesses um, as someone trying to live a dream uh, as an entrepreneur or part of the economic development of a community and the and the state? Anila, can you speak to that? Um, yeah, of course, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we are here to serve all, right? That that all um, all stages of business, all sectors of business, all geographies, all sectors. So um, the the state has invested a lot of money in small businesses and for entrepreneurship. And uh, the state understands the impact that um, every business is making on our economy. And it's a work that's being done in the local areas, main streets and local communities that are really making the impact statewide and to help our state remain competitive on a, on a national basis. So um, I, I know not all entrepreneurs are feel heard or seen, uh, but we, that's what this call is one small effort to try to address that. Absolutely. Thanks, Neela. Uh, another question that I received was, I have someone who um, hires a subcontractor and wants to hire them more often and pay the person more. Um, the person happens to fit into two minority groups, so I wondered if there is any grant program or some way to help me with this. And the business owner was a, was a sole proprietor. So if anybody in this meeting has some ideas on, on that, that would be helpful for that person. That also dovetails into, are there grants uh, available for startup businesses? I, I can start with those. Okay. Um, and I think others can join in. Un unfortunately, there's not as, as much undiluted funding as businesses would like. Um, we do have um, loans. And I did just recently put a link in the chat, the deed resources and funding for small businesses. That is a pretty uh, inclusive listing right now of programs that we have with Indeed, or we work with our partners, CDFIs and others in the community to um, administer. The grants that we have right now are the Launch Minnesota Innovation Grants. Those are for businesses that have high tech, high growth, um businesses that they are um, creating an innovative technology or an innovative business model um, we have 1.5 million each fiscal year um, we just had our first round close and so there'll be announcements soon on the first round of grantees another um, grant program um, that will be launched later in january was the Promise Act, and there is a Promise Grant and a Promise Loans. Um, more information will come out with that. Uh, in the Twin Cities, it's with very specific areas. I'm not sure if Brandon Toner is on the call. His area is leading this effort. There's some very specific neighborhoods that are involved in the Twin Cities, and I'm happy to put a, a link to that. And then in Greater Minnesota, the uh, Initiative Foundations are leading the grants. Uh, but once again, we're using this time to stand up the program and, and make sure that it's um, ready for applications in, the, in, in early 2024. But that might be a, another grant program. Okay, but thank there you, are spe Specific guidelines. Yep. If anyone has some other information on, on grants, um, I think Sean talked uh, about connecting people to the right spots. Um, because the other two questions that I've I've received is uh, is there money for uh, people who don't have good credit uh, to get their business up and running, and are there funds available for uh, businesses to assist them with equipment purchases? 
And I think, Neely, you touched on the equipment purchases with the, uh, the automation loan program. People can look at the, the deed funding for that. But if um, people have some other suggestions within this meeting for possibly grants or where they need to look, um, I know in our office, we, we certainly suggest looking in our programs and then checking out the, the SBA loan guarantee programs. And those are, are really going to be working with an individual lender who who uh, is part of that program. But that, those are the, the main sources along with CDFIs and, and, and other resources. So those are the questions that that I received. If people have some questions in the meeting here, please unmute yourself and, and go ahead and ask. Mark, can, can I just add, add a couple other grant suggestions and sure. into the mix here? Yep. So, because we get this question a lot about are there yes. grants out there for from a business? And uh, like Neela mentioned, there's not uh, outside of the um, uh, the Launch Minnesota uh, Innovation Grants. There's not a lot of grants to to just start a business, but there are grant programs out there uh, to incentivize a certain kind of activity that a business might not otherwise do. Uh, or, or that, that provide some kind of public benefit. So a couple areas to look into if you're a small business with this is one around sustainability. Um, there are grants and rebates for energy efficiency and waste reduction. Uh, we have actually two programs at the chamber that help with that called Energy Smart and Waste Wise. And so there will often be funding either from the state level or from counties or utility companies to help yeah. businesses yep. with uh, with sustainability efforts. Um, and then there are a couple other uh, grant programs around things like exporting. So if you're looking to start exporting your product or, or service, there's a step grant um, that businesses can access. Um, and then for companies usually that have a little bit larger workforce, there's some workforce training grants as well um, to help with kind of customized training for new or existing employees. So um, I would maybe think about what are some of those activities within my business that I might need support with rather than just kind of general grant funding, which is hard, much harder to come by. Yes, yes. Thanks, Sean. Uh, Mark Dean, you, you were gonna ask a question? Oh, uh, yeah, Sean, thanks for mentioning that because that triggered a few other grant opportunities that may apply to small businesses on the call. You know, I'm thinking of food businesses that might need a small grant for equipment um, in their local retail store, right? And so there, I, I would advise people to check out the Minnesota Department of Ag, and they've yeah, got a couple yeah. of different um, grant programs there. They're they're smaller. Um, also, you know, on the food side of things too, um, I would advise folks to to check out the USDA site. Um, it's it's difficult to to take your business and and get it matched up to the grant. You kind of have to have that right business to be able to apply to that because of the eligibility purposes and so on and so forth. Um, but I always I always mention too look, look local first. Look at your local economic development authority or look at for your local city um, to see what they might have in regards to small city block grants which I usually fix up funds maybe, or deferred loans possibly. Not every community has those, but a lot of times those aren't necessarily advertised appropriately. So um, I, I, I would also say this, that, well, you can spend a lot of time searching and searching for grants. Um, and, I, and I tend to advise our small business folks to, to be able to, you know, take that time and effort on building out your plan, and um, you know, don't spend a whole lot of time trying to find just that that little piece of money, right? Um, but it depends on what you want to do. <clears throat> Certainly, thanks, Mark. That is that is information I'm sure all of us have, uh, as resource partners, have tried to to do for people is have them look around, look local broaden out what you're what you're trying to do and, and really look for sources. So again, if people have some questions or some comments they want to make right now, perfect time to do that. Question. Questions, comments. 
Could I ask a question? Absolutely. Okay. Um, most of the uh, loan programs I've researched and found out about uh, have minimum monthly income requirements, which I would be disqualified for in most of those programs because I am low income at the moment. I'm a startup at an early stage. Uh, can you recommend any loan programs that uh, startups like me would be eligible for uh, that do not have such high minimum monthly income requirements? The one that I found that I think I might qualify for would be the Emerging in, uh, Entrepreneur Loan Program. Can anybody speak to that program or any other programs that I might qualify for? Do we have any lenders of the Emerging Entrepreneur Loan Program on the call? And so, Chris, for that program, DEED has money that we work with partners across the state as those lenders. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Let me. From what I understand, uh, oh, I, I so, oh, and here's D Drew. Drew would have some details here too, who used to run that program. Um, yes. Yeah, so we partner with CDFIs and other economic development lenders for that program, and one of the target groups for it is, in fact, low income individuals. Mm -hmm. um, and that is based upon uh, the county of residence and the family size for the household. Um, and so a lot of those uh, community lenders do have sort of different target groups that they're working with, but we keep up on our website uh, a directory of those participating lenders and some of the particular areas they're focused on with links out to their websites. Um, you do have to apply with the lenders specifically. I am not aware that any of them have particular um, requirements for income, although I know there's at least uh, someone from Women Venture on here and probably from a couple others. So if anyone else wants to throw into that, um, they evaluate a number of different factors and those community lenders are more uh, typically able to address the needs of folks who have challenges like lower credit scores than would qualify for bank financing and things along those lines. Okay, uh, thanks. Chris, this is Mark. In yeah, hi, Mark. I know of two organizations. So the Ready organization here in Rochester is qualified to do EELP loans, and then also the Southern Minnesota Initiative Foundation too. Mm -hmm. So um, give me a call. We can work on yeah. an application. Yeah, I'll be in touch with you, Mark, because I want to work with you to prepare my financial statements and uh, business plan. So thank you very much. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks, everyone. That was great. Any other questions? Well, while you're thinking of a, of a possible question, I want to say the next meeting will be November 14th, uh, 2 to 3 p.m. And we are going to have some people from DEED uh, talk about the paid family medical leave program that DEED will be standing up uh, in the near future. And we will also certainly be open to topics you want to um, address, questions you want to ask. So uh, one more time, is, does anyone have any other comments or any questions they'd like to ask today? Mark, I was just going to throw out one more program yeah. suggestion, and I'm not sure the details around it. If, there might be somebody from the SBA on this call, and maybe they could explain more details, but the SBA has a microloan uh, program and work through uh, approved lenders on that, and I'm not sure if that could potentially be an option. Um, I'll throw a link to that uh, in the chat here, but maybe one other program that could potentially have more flexibility than some other traditional loans. Hey, Sean, yep. this is Don yep. Jackson with the SBA, and I do appreciate you bringing that up about the micro lenders. Uh, the great thing about our micro lenders is they do loans up to 50,000. Uh, we do find that a lot of traditional lenders don't like to do the loans under 100 or 150,000. So the micro lenders are a great opportunity to work on those loans up to that $50,000 threshold. Um, the one thing that I do recognize that I want to let everybody know is also working with our other resource partners besides SBDC is also SCORE to work on your business plan, your finances, your financial projections. And maybe once you sit down with one of those business uh, coaches, 
you might find out that you didn't need initially 40,000, you need 160,000 or more, where you may need to actually go to one of our traditional lending partners for a traditional SBA backed guaranteed loan and go from there. So I'll share the uh, link with the uh, score so you can reach out to get a score mentor. It's no cost and confidential to you to utilize the score mentors as you prepare your business plan to reach out for that access to capital. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, those are, there are so many resources that I think so many of us are familiar with. I sometimes forget that I need to bring those up in a, in a different group with, with other people. SCORE is out there, SBA is out there, um, the Minnesota Chamber. We have so many resource partners. Um, please take a look at our Join Us um, uh, Minnesota site. We have Launch Minnesota. We have the uh, Minnesota Small Business Assistance Office, the Minnesota Small Business Development Centers. There is overlapping information, but the reason it overlaps is because we all know that there are different needs for, for different uh, businesses, whether you're just starting out, whether you're thinking of starting, or whether you're actually in business and you, you need to get this, this business more, more profitable. So one last call for questions. We I, appreciate you. I do see time. a hand sure. up. All right. Um, yeah, hi. Um, hi my name is Kendra, and um, I own a, a zero waste and refill store, and there's a handful of similar stores across the state. Um, and it's, it's kind of a weird um, retail position because we sell, you know, home goods in bulk, which people will bring in their own containers to fill up, which uh, then directly impacts the amount of waste that then goes to local landfills, that sort of a thing. Um, and I'm curious if you know if there are any, um, if the state is incentivizing moves that direction with whether it's, you know, funding or, I don't know, incentives that would tie in with sustainability for something like this that is technically retail, it's a store, but is also very directly impacting our local and statewide sustainability. Kendra, what I was just doing was just looking at the uh, Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. That would be one section I would have you go out to look at. They do have funding opportunities. They also have a small business ombudsman, which I, I think to use as, as someone who can be kind of um, kind of an intermediary to understand the, uh, the programs with, within PCA. But um, let me just grab this link and I will just throw that um, out to you. Uh, if other people have some more information, that would be that would be great. Please share it. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kendra, I would say look at your county website uh, because counties will often have uh, programs for waste diversion or, or waste reduction. And then, like Mark mentioned, the MPCA has um, they have different grant programs that will kind of come on a rolling basis. So you can even just uh, set up like an alert for that for new new grants that come out because they do, they are kind of periodic um, with those, but um, those are two that I would suggest. And, and where are you located? Um, I'm actually in Duluth. So we do work okay. with our local um, WLSD, so the, our local waste treatment plants, um, but they're also pretty small. So yeah, we partner on just projects, um, but statewide, I'm, I was just curious as to whether that's something that, you know, Minnesota is hoping to eventually incentivize because that does make a pretty direct impact on you know waste reduction within the state absolutely for sure all right thank you um i see in the uh chat um we have another question are there any resources for low-cost technology resources or discounted software subscriptions and maybe an sbdc rep could maybe mention what they can offer I know through our association, the ASBDC, sometimes there are some different technology solutions where you can get discounted rates. I know in the past that there's been QuickBooks, um, QuickBooks Online, where you can yeah. get a, 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 like I think it's, I believe it was 30% off, 35% off an annual subscription. So that might still be an option. Um, there's other resources through Clover, Toast, um, some of the other restaurant uh, point of sale systems that you can certainly take advantage of. So let me, if you give me a moment, I'll take a peek here, see if I can find what other ones are, are certainly available. 
Oh, thanks, Andy. I, I appreciate that. That is a uh, somewhat common question that we have. What's the what's the best POS system to use? You know, how do I do accounting? How do I pick a tax year? How do I, you know, keep track of uh, of those things? Um, one thing that I just came across today, um, it may or may not fit this audience. I subscribe to a uh, newsletter that the Minneapolis Star Tribune is now putting out. They will do it. Uh, it's either weekly or monthly. It's all around the uh, the cannabis uh, industry or cannabis use as far as relating to different licensing when that comes in. Basically, any information that they come in and find, they are having people uh, subscribe. People who are over the age of 21 uh, can subscribe to that newsletter to, to keep people uh, up to date. We have been receiving in our office personally a lot of calls. Um, some of those calls um, are um, thinking that the licenses have already been established, Every everything's out there. Um, there are uh, a couple of dispensaries that are open on Native American uh, tribal lands, uh, but the licensing is not going to be going into effect until early 2025. But I just wanted to, to bring that up because I, I, I think that is a um, a big topic in the in the people we talk to either uh, on the on the periphery. We have talked to hemp growers. We've talked to people who are selling THC products. It's all in that 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 big uh, area. So if you have an interest, the Star Tribune has a uh, link on their uh, on their website today uh, about joining this this newsletter. If if you're at all interested, whether you want to start a business or whether you're a uh, a city official that wants to say, yeah, what what are we doing with this? We we got to figure this out. So, Andy, were you able to find anything? It looks like uh, what my peers, Ian Carlstrom uh, from our Moorhead office, just put a uh, SBDC financial tools link in the chat. So you should be able to see it there where you can grab um, some quick work, quick books resources that are available. Yeah, fantastic. I appreciate that. Um, there was also a link for TechSoup um, in the chat. And just to let people know, uh, I am recording the, uh, the the meeting. You should be able to go back to it on the link. What I'll try and do is I'll I'll pull out of the the meeting chat for people who want it. Um, it just helps me keep track of kind of the things we were talking about. I'll pull that information out kind of as a summary. So if you're interested in that, I'd be I'd be certainly glad to share that with you. There so was a we, yeah. there was mm -hmm. a question earlier in the chat about are okay. is the state doing anything to de-risk some bank lending and other lending for for different businesses and just want to share that the state has has invested a lot in this last legislative session probably never enough uh, but to help um, with some of that lending through the opportunity fund and some other programs um, i know drew is on the call from our business finance area but that was addressed this legislative session trying to help um, de-risk some of the, the loans uh, so more businesses can access that capital so just wanted to comment on that question. Great. Thanks for catching that, Neil. I, I really appreciate that. So we know that your time is valuable. If there's nothing else people would like to discuss right now, we will see you in a month uh, from 2 to 3 p.m. on November 14th. Thanks, everybody. Bye.